some producers aren't waiting for the government to clear the runway for a technology that some say is a game changer. Josh Bittner explains. To the untrained eye, the sight of a UAV, or unmanned aerial vehicle, soaring over the rural landscape might seem like an amateur activity. But the machine soon could become a key weapon in a robust agricultural arsenal. The nice part is that the two of these work really close together. So if you have any issues with anything, you're constant contact with the ship. If early adopters are able to chart the course, someday drones could be as common on farms as tractors. And with cheap technology blossoming, some tech-savvy producers are already attempting to hack their fields. It's just another thing to give the grower control, and that's really what it's all about. It's what everybody wants. As technological innovations flood the market, the cost of their high-tech components, also found in drones, are driven down by economies of scale. And affordability could offer significant opportunities in the wild blue yonder. A 2013 report by the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems reveals the UAV industry will add over 100,000 jobs and $82 billion to the U.S. economy over the next decade. I have no understanding where they come up with those numbers. While the exact figures are disputed by some, few expect the steady rise of autonomous vehicles to subside. However, adding a new skill set to the farm is rarely an out-of-the-box solution. You know, I've had farmer customers say, well, you know, I can go on Amazon and I can buy one of these for 100 bucks and put a camera on it and I'm in business. Well, no. And while a budding industry spreads its wings, there are complications which prevent it from moving forward on the right side of the law. The ships have come a long way. They fly longer, they're safer, um, you know, but we're waiting for the FAA. The Federal Aviation Administration, which holds ultimate jurisdiction over the use of drones, was ordered by Congress in 2012 to formulate rules integrating UAVs into the national airspace. But the FAA has warned it will likely miss a self-imposed 2015 deadline, citing safety concerns for traditional aircraft. Currently, the majority of drone flights in the U.S. are conducted by hobbyists over private property below 400 feet. Commercial operation technically is illegal, but progress is being made. Exemptions have let some companies, largely in the entertainment industry, lift off. The government also has established test sites tied to six states, each focused on a different UAV specialty. In upstate New York, for example, drones are evaluating methods to scout farm fields using several types of sensors. It takes time to gather and evaluate the data, but armed with a vision of increased yields, decreased runoff, and the ability to feed the world on existing acreage, some farmers are already embracing the high life. It's a different approach. We like to call it a systems approach. Illinois-based 360 Yield Center is looking for ways to maximize every grain of potential on farms. As UAVs buzz over commodity crops, capturing multi-spectral images with modified cameras, computers on the ground digitally stitch the images into an agronomic tapestry. And the different infrared wavelengths offer crucial information about plant health. It's when you go to the, the NDVI enhanced photo that now you can really start to pick out the, the differences of what's going on there. Normalized Difference Vegetation Index, or NDVI imagery, allows producers to make timely, corrective, cost-saving prescriptions regarding nitrogen, pesticides, herbicides, and water application at any time of the growing season. Today is the best yielding corn that this farm has ever raised, ever, and I mean ever. And it's due to a lot of great management, and we've put in a sub-drip irrigation system that's taken this farm to places it's never been before. While drones of diverse pedigrees and varying capabilities wait to be cleared for takeoff, it is the culmination of several innovative applications that may elevate precision agriculture to new heights. During the growing season, strategies are developed through thermal readouts and on-the-spot soil analysis in hopes of record production. 
I would classify this as a very efficient system. By working both sides of the equation, with robots in the air and irrigation below ground, agronomists can funnel resources to where they are needed most. We're using drones and, and soil scans and, and different things to sense what's out there in the field. And then we come back and we utilize this tool. Because this is always underground, we can apply at any time. We don't have to throw it on before the crop because we're putting it in that root zone. I think it's important that everybody in the room understands I don't sell ships, never sold ships. You cannot hire me to fly. No one has ever done that. People have hired me to speak, okay, several people. But uh, what I talk about is what you can do with this technology. So let's dive right into this. With a background in aviation and farming, Chad Colby is a tireless promoter of drone use in the realm of agriculture. Do you know right now out west, people are putting thermal cameras on this, flying over, the, over their livestock and determining whether there, any of their livestock has an illness right now, has a fever? I mean, that's what's happening right now. I mean, and it exists. It's not super expensive either. Many in the ag sector are eagerly waiting for an opportunity to profit from UAV flights. But advocates for agricultural aviators, particularly those who roll, twist, and turn at low altitudes, are skeptical of the economic forecast for unmanned systems. The very nature of their work could put them in close proximity, so crop dusters are following the issue of drone assimilation intently. There's a tremendous amount of misinformation out there. Those numbers are blown out of proportion. If you look, those are the people who manufacture these and who sell them and want to provide a service. And of course, they're foaming at the mouth because there's a lot of money out there to be made here. Ahead of comprehensive FAA rules, UAVs will undoubtedly continue their progressive march. And for some on the bleeding edge, patience is a virtue. I think at the end of the day, it's like everything else. You can fly this equipment halfway and do a halfway job, or you can fly it with the responsibility that goes with it. For Market to Market, I'm Josh Bittner.